everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, I'm very excited because this monster here is working. Let's get into it. Now, in the last episode, I was chuffed to bits because I got my wheels in, and now they're on the car, and they are shooed with Toyo Proxy R888Rs, a uh, fantastic track day tyre, but um, we're going to use these for tuning first, and then we'll go to full slicks when we're pushing for timed laps and timed events. But for now, these are good enough. So what do you think of the tyres and the wheel combos? Pretty cool, eh? Um, I think before we see this running, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour as to what's happened since the last episode, because there's a lot that's been happening. So we'll start at the back. Now, one of the first things that becomes apparent is all this aluminium work when you look at it without the bodywork on, and it's the cooling system. So we've got one of the problems with a, a beetle shape, if you like, because it was air-cooled. There was never a massive grill at the front to put a radiator. So on the fun cup cars, which this is based off, we've got a roof scoop and some side scoops. And uh, what we've done is we've used these for the rear radiator. So this radiator here is for the motor and inverter and that header tank there is for that. And these big pipes and tubes, if you like, are scooping in that air, throwing it into the air box, and out comes the heat. And then we've got some fans here, which are suck fans, just to switch on if they need additional help. And then we've got another header tank here, which is the battery coolant system with the radiator up front. Next thing that we put in, obviously, is the battery packs, because if we're going to be powering this 1,000 horsepower monster and we've got one motor in the back, one motor in the front, we need batteries for that. So we've got the main battery. Actually, not the main battery, because there's three and they're all equal. So we've got one battery pack behind me here. And then you've got, if you follow the orange cables, it'll take you to the next battery pack, because we've got two either side there, like side pods in a Formula One car, if you like and that central seat. And while we're talking about the seat, let's have a look at the interior, because that's my favorite place to sit at the moment. Now, to show you the interior, I'm going to get in it. And I've noticed there's a knack to getting in this, and you'll notice that I've not quite mastered it yet, because, uh, well, you'll see why. So I think the best way to do it is one foot in, slide your bum on that, and then just drop in. And that's the uh, current method I'm using anyway. And I tell you what, one thing that definitely helps getting in and out is a removal steering wheel. Like any racing car interior, it's pretty sparse because you kind of want to keep your eyes on the prize and that road in front. So all I've got here, if I take the steering wheel off, uh, is I've got a main screen. I've got a, uh, and that will show motor bits and pieces. I've got another screen over here for battery. Uh, I've got a start button forward reverse and handbrake on and off. So if I show you how to start it, it's, that's it, that's started. No brum 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 noises or anything like that. Um, the screen comes on straight away and I can see now the speed, the motor temperature and other bits and pieces if I need to keep an eye on that. And if I release the handbrake, so it's an EPB setup, so electric parking brake on the rear. And then all I need to do then is put my foot on the brake and put it in forward or reverse, and off we go. Which I'm not gonna do now, because there's no steering wheel on it. Now I just wanna show you a little bit more about the dashboard display side of things, because it's really cool, I think, and simple as well. We've got an iPad, and what happens is, as soon as the iPad detects a charge signal coming in here, we've programmed it to fire up the EV Controls app, which then shows us all the information we need from the T2C Tesla controller and the Tesla motors themselves. So if I switch on the ignition here now, instantly comes up the uh, app and there we go. It's all live. Perfect. I love Apple stuff. It's so quick to boot up. If this is Windows, I'd still be waiting. Um, so what have we got? We've got um, drive signal here. So if I put my foot on, on the brake and press reverse, because you need your foot on the brake to change direction, you'll see it go into reverse and then forward neutral. Uh, what else we got? So we've got motor temperature here as well, 27 degrees Celsius at the moment. Speed, um, traction control is off at the moment. We're going to have a play with putting that on and tuning that a little bit as well when we get going. And if I put my foot on the brake, you can see that goes red. That's just 
uh, confirming it's getting the brake signal and gives additional braking assist through regenerative braking. And then over on this side, you've got things like the revs uh, of the motor, the pack voltage, and other bits of information here. But 99.99% of the time, you're not looking anywhere near that. You've got your eyes on the road. So over on the left-hand side of the dash, we've got the battery management system display from Dilithium. And this is for diagnostic purposes uh, for, uh, rather than anything else, because if there is a problem with the battery management system, it'll just shut the car off. But what we've got here, we've got uh, the top bar up here is the uh, kilowatt hour battery pack size. And you can see we haven't set that yet because it's black and saying 20 kilowatt hours, which is, is not 20 kilowatt hour battery pack in this. Um, battery pack uh, voltage is 343 at the moment. Then you've got your amps, so that'll go up and down, whether or not you're flowing the throttle or it's gone into regen, etc. And then down here is your cells. Now, this is um, showing a problem at the moment because pack one, which is this one here, is red. And that's my pack to the right hand side. And then there's a known issue in that which developed recently, which we've got to fix and snag. So that's the battery management system display. As I say, it's more for information purposes than anything else. You're not going to be looking at that while you're driving the car. Now around at the front, we've got obviously the front motor's in and your iBooster is in. So that's the electric power assisted brake system out of a Tesla. All the low voltage wiring is done behind the dash. We've got our bevel box for the steering to come over and then down over the uh, Tesla motor. And here you can see the battery radiator system. So this is the coolant system for the um, batteries. Whether or, not that, whether or not that's big enough yet, we won't know until we get it on track. So uh, this can actually go a lot bigger if we needed to. But um, yeah, I think that's it for now. Who wants to see it moving then? Tim? Yeah, come on, it's about time. We spent a long time building this, so let's get it going. Right, go on in, let's see if it moves. Now, anybody expecting massive burnouts, I'm afraid you and I are gonna be very disappointed because Tony, our workshop manager, has um, told me, no uncertain terms, do not do that because uh, under pain of death, if I break the drive shafts, which are temporary drive shafts at the moment to calculate the length that we need to get the proper ones built, the temporary drive shafts are just welded up, so they're not very strong. Um, so yeah, if I break them, I'm in big trouble. So no burnouts today, unfortunately, people. So I'm just going to gently roll it. And the other thing is, obviously, we've still got to fix the battery management system issue in this pack here. Uh, bypass the uh, safety systems at the moment because I've looked into it. It's not a very serious issue. It's a known issue that I've had before. But, um, you know, until everything is absolutely 100%, I can't floor it. But I can move it. So without further ado, on goes the ignition. Off goes the handbrake and ready ready tim yeah let's go <laughs> oh my god this thing really wants to go that's the first thing to say but the brakes are insane on this thing uh i'm so impressed with the brakes <laughs> uh, and another thing i've noticed is i need power steering desperately need power steering tony workshop manager actually did say right at the start i need power steering and i was going nah i'm a man don't need that Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> so power steering is definitely required. But first impressions, yeah, she's a monster. She wants to go. And it's really hard not to put my foot in the throttle. So there we go. Tim's just said something which is absolutely spot on. And that is, this is the definition of frustration at the moment because I've got a 1,000 horsepower four-wheel drive race car that I can't put my foot down yet because there's still some things to do we've got to sort out the drive shaft we've got to do the suspension tuning not least of which we've got to put the body work on it and we've got to sort that out and then we've got to take it to a track to do some tuning and some proper you know flooring of the throttle if you like but we're a lot closer it moves it works it's alive so if you want to see this car up close by the way 
come down to our stand at Goodwood Festival of Speed 2023 because we're going to have this on our stand along with a load of other classics that we've got down there and you can have a look at the detail of this car up close. So hopefully see some of you down there at Goodwood Festival of Speed in a couple of weeks. But um, I want to talk about the name of this car because in the last episode I asked for some suggestions from you guys as to what we're going to call this and we're going to put that name down the side of the car as well and did you guys come through? You had some fantastic ideas but me and Tim had narrowed it down to just three and I want you to put your choice of which three we should go with in the comments below and the name with the most number of comments is what we're going to go with. And the three names we've chosen are Bug Zapper, Kilowatt, and Silent Assassin. All right? So comments below, which name should we name this monster? Bug Zapper, Kilowatt, or Silent Assassin? Comments below, please. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you on the next one.